Good morning, Pastor Dwayne here with my beautiful bride, Miss Cameron, and we are coming to you this week bringing you some revelation out of the teachings of Yeshua, the parables of Yeshua that carry great mystery. There are three primary parables that Jesus taught that bring revelation. All other parables, as a matter of fact, come out of these three parables. As you know, the parable of the sower is the key, key parable, and Jesus himself said out of this parable come all the other parables. And then you have the parable of the Good Samaritan and the parable of the talents. These are the three primary parables that set forth the mystery of the kingdom. When you read these parables, you don't just uh, read them at face value, but you have to dig into the revelation. There's deep, deep, deep revelation in those parables. So we're going to be talking about those and how they apply to us and how they release into us kingdom revelation for this hour. Jesus said it's been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And these three parables are full of kingdom mysteries. Call a friend, a neighbor, family member, loved one, and invite them to join us every day right here on VTN at 4.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. live, or you can watch on demand at vtntv.com. Your loved ones don't want to miss this revelation. This is groundbreaking. I assure you, I assure you, you're going to hear some things this week you've never heard before come out of the Word of God. As Rabbi Yeshua is rewriting the rules of Judaism and establishing the principles of the kingdom that you and I live by as Gentiles, it's fascinating and powerful. So we're going to get into that today. Remember, if you need prayer, someone's there on the other end of the line. If you call that number, they'll pray with you. If you send us your prayer request at DwayneMiller.com. And always know that we're here through the friends and partners of this ministry who sow and sow generously. And if we're a blessing to you, would you pray about becoming a partner and being a blessing to this ministry and help us continue to share the gospel all over the world? We have friends that we hear from from all over the world, as far away as New Zealand, as a matter of fact. And we want to encourage you to pray about becoming a part of this ministry and what a blessing all of our partners are. And thank you so much. So we're going to get into this, but before we do, I'm going to ask my beautiful bride to pray and ask God to give us revelatory understanding of what he's going to say today. Sweetie, will you pray? Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the ability to live in this free country and for it to remain so while we're here on this earth. Amen. Father, thank you for sending your son to pay the ultimate sacrifice so that we can just simply ask for him to come into our heart, cleanse us, and give us a new life in Amen. you, Father. And what a wonderful life it is, Father. Yes. And as we explore week after week how to increase and, and become powerful in that life that you have intended for us to have, Father, thank you for the word that comes out of this man of God. And thank you for the words that are going to come out today from both of us that you will empower us to speak your words and your words only. Yes. And that the hearer will have a, a complete and clear understanding of it, Father. Yes. Have them to learn how to check the word for themselves as you have been so faithful to teach us. And Father, just ask that you will just uplift each and every one today who has a broken heart. Mm. That you will just restore those hearts, Father. Mm -hmm. And that if all they have is but you and you alone, that is more than enough. Yes. Ask, Father, that you will just show them your mighty power today in your healing touch of comfort and love that only you can give, Father. You are all we need. And, I, Father, I ask that you will just continue to add to them each and every day, whether it be a health problem, a financial problem, economic, whatever it may be, Father, that you'll just add to them yes. increase, increase, increase day by day. We thank you for what you are going to do this week. We praise you for all the testimonies that we're going to just call forth and right now, mm -hmm. Father. We're calling for testimonies to flood in yes, day Jesus, by day. Yes, thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. In these three parables, you have the Good Samaritan, which starts at the beginning with the fall of man. It's a parable about the fall of man and redemption. And then you have uh, the parable of the sower, which is the operation of the kingdom. And that's where we are today. And then the talents refers to the transfer of wealth in the last days mm -hmm. and the end times. And so we're certainly there also. And this beautiful lady every morning gets up long before I do and just tucks herself away with Holy Spirit. And she practices a principle of Yeshua. You know, you've heard me teach Jesus the rabbi, and I teach it all over America in Kingdom University. And in that teaching, I remind people that 
the, the cornerstone of all of Jesus' teaching, his doctrine, if you will, uh, his rewriting of the Torah. Jesus interpreted the Torah to the people, and it's the Sermon on the Mount. That's his interpretation of the Torah. When you read the Sermon on the Mount, everything Jesus would do or say or become comes out of the Sermon on the Mount. That was his, his yoke in the, in the Hebrew understanding, his yoke. That's why he said, if you're heavy laden and burdened down with religion, come to me and take my yoke, my teaching. Learn from me because it's easy. My burden's light. And so the, the sum total of his doctrine is the Sermon on the Mount. But the cornerstone to that Sermon on the Mount is the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And you know the Lord's Prayer. But it, the Lord's Prayer is a kingdom way of life. It's not just a prayer. It's a kingdom way of life where everything you need is already provided. When you go into your closet, and you pray. As a matter of fact, when Jesus said, go into your closet or into your room, he's actually talking about this, this prayer shawl, this talit. Go into your tent of meeting and prayer, and I will bring you into an atmosphere where everything you need is already provided. And so, you know, he, he says, so go into that room and declare our Father, my source, that is in the atmosphere that I breathe. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it's being done in heaven. You know, we can live, sweetheart, we can live in a, an atmosphere of God's will from heaven on earth being done perpetually. We can live in that place where God's will in our life is being done without us even having to think about it. And so he went on to say, give us this day your daily bread. That's not talking about the provision of food. As a matter of fact, remember, he told the disciples in the Sermon on the Mount, he told them, Consider the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. Why are you worried about what you're going to eat and drink? And you know you can't even be concerned about how tall or short you are and change that. He's saying, consider the fact that daily you need bread. But he's talking about this: you need a revelatory word for today. Mm -hmm. Give me today a daily word of revelation, because yesterday's bread won't suffice for today. I need a now word every day. She does this. She goes, and I do too, and I'm sure you do. But she gets up every morning early, tucks away in the Holy Spirit, in that prayer room where everything she needs is already supplied in the kingdom, and she gets a word. And I ask her on the way here today, as we get into this revelation of these parables, I ask her to share with you what God's saying to her about where we are, what we can expect, what's happening, the restoration of all things. Remember, Acts says before Jesus comes, there will be the restoration mm -hmm. of all things mm -hmm. and an atmosphere of refreshing. We're talking about a third great awakening. We're talking about revival breaking out all over the world. So, sweetie, share with our viewers today. I know they want to hear from you. What is God perpetually saying to you day after day after day that can encourage us? Well, there is a consistent theme, that's for sure. It, it is about restoration. But I cannot begin without going to the backbone of what I relied on nearly daily, especially at the beginning. And to me, this is the beginning of a walk of faith. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I, it's Mark 11. 22 through 25 and for time's sake I won't read it I'm sure most of you probably even have it memorized if not I highly suggest it Mark 11 22 through 25 but I put over at the side and, and really large print words mixed with faith learn that combination and unlock the kingdom with faith God will either give us the thing or the thing to get the thing mm. so uh, rely, uh, go back to that and Beside that, I put decree it, believe it, expect it, it's done. Mm -hmm. If a mountain is cast into the sea, it can never come back. That's right. So put your problems in the sea and leave them there. So anyway, I encourage you to begin your walk every day if you need to with Mark 11, 22 to yes. 20, 25. Yes. Then this is one that I refer to quite often, and it may not resonate with everyone, but there is a population that this will resonate with. It is Job 29, 12, and 13. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him, the blessing of him. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. That's all right. <laughs> this was my anthem for a long time. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Wow. 
so excuse my emotion That's all on right. that. No. And then one, and I actually I keep, I've mentioned this letter that I received years ago, and I won't show it for privacy reasons, but I have this stored right here, and I'm not going to take it out until a certain appointed time. But this was Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 3, but it wasn't the whole verse that, that the Lord showed me when I first found this. And I'm looking back on my dates, and if you can see it all on camera, there are quite a few dates on here. <laughs> As I get a word from the Lord, which is daily, I do date it. Because this is my restoration Bible, mm -hmm. and that's what it's full of. It's it's the, all, all of the, these promises. It's all the promises related to what particular needs I'm praying for. And there's two giant ones that I have been in, in prayer for for many years, and I'm never giving up. Um, I'm looking back, and at the late, I think the farthest one out is July of 20. And what he showed me was four words. And sometimes that will be the case. I won't look at a, a whole chapter. I won't look at a whole verse. It may just be a few words that pop out to me. Mm -hmm. And this was, today, restore me. Mm. And I have come back to that so often. And I can't even count. I would take too much time to count the times that I have turned to this passage. Mm -hmm. So I hope that will help someone. Oh, then... Scoot over, i got to do this one. Excuse me. 2 Samuel 16, verse 12. Excuse me. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. So what has come across my path as bad, which was this letter right here, mm -hmm. it's not bad to me. It's the Lord's. It's his to deal with. And he will requite good mm -hmm. for evil. When you wake up one day and everything that has been your source, has, it has been announced to you that it's gone. It's no longer there. I'm talking about financially. I'm talking about stability. I'm talking about in the death of her spouse, etc. And one day the news comes that your income's gone and it's over. That, that's real. Someone out there today, you're probably facing the same thing. Maybe you walked into work and you were fired. And, uh, or they said, we're dissolving your position. And now what? Now what? Listen, never panic. That's from the enemy. Yes. What she's sharing with you is the word. The word trumps every source of news in your life. Yes. The word is real. You're still standing you're still being provided for, and God has provided for her in some radical ways because she took the word and she worked it. We're going to get to the parable of the sower this week, which is the sum total of all kingdom operation. But that's what she did. She took that seed. She sowed it. I like what you said the other day when you said, you sow the seed, you sow the word, and then leave it to God for the harvest and thank him that the harvest is coming. You don't dig it up mm -hmm. and replant it by restating it. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, you don't, when you're believing for something, you take it to the throne of heaven and you speak God's will from heaven to earth. You decree a thing, it's done. Mm -hmm. You leave it in the soil of the kingdom. And then every day you fertilize and you uh, cultivate that seed and with praise. faith and praise. and praise. Thanking God it's done. Mm -hmm. You don't dig it up. And tomorrow say, Lord, I know I said this yesterday, but no, you don't dig it up. You just plant it and leave it, cultivate it with praise and water it with faith and thanking God that it's finished. So anyway, we, we wanted to share that with you as we start this week, because you're going to see in the unraveling of these three parables, these three kingdom parables, the operation of God's kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 13, 10, the disciples came to Yeshua. You have to understand, he's been, he's been rewriting everything. When you read, let me give you something that will help you in the four Gospels. Red letter, when Jesus speaks. When Jesus says, you have heard it said, the rabbi with Shmika, authority, who's the only man alive at that time who has the authority to interpret the Torah to the people, the other rabbis can only recite what they've been told by their rabbis. 
Jesus has the authority to interpret the Torah. When he says, you have heard it said, in other words, he's about to say everything these Pharisees and, and you've been taught till now is wrong. Mm. And I'm going to rewrite it. I say unto you, everything Jesus said and everything Jesus did became a rule of the kingdom, a law of Judaism, but a principle of the kingdom for us who've been grafted in by grace. Now keep that in mind. So when you read your Bible and Yeshua says, you have heard it said, he is about to throw out mm -hmm. the false teaching, the legalism of the, of the Pharisees. And he is about to add now the truth of grace, mercy, love, and the operation of the kingdom. So the disciples come to Jesus and said, why do you speak to them in parables? Why are, you, why are you always telling these stories? And remember, they are mysteries. They're not just stories. Jesus is sharing something that has a mystery that can only be perceived by faith. Mm. See, you have to have the revelation of the Father right. from heaven by Holy Spirit to understand this mystery. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you, that's us, it's been given to us, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, how heaven operates, and then when you bring heaven to earth by faith, this is how the kingdom operates. You, you see, most believers are operating through earthly principles in a fallen world, a cursed world, and have no victory, constant defeat, because they've not learned how to take the mysteries of God's kingdom revelation and plug it into their circumstances because see, you're not at the mercy of your circumstances. No. You're living above your circumstances. Yes. And he said, it's been given to you right now. You claim that it's been given to me to know the mysteries mm -hmm. of the operation of heaven on earth. He said, but to them, it has not been given. Now that's Matthew 13, 10, 11. Here's verse 12. For whoever has, now get this, whoever has, whoever has what? Whoever has the mystery the revelation of God's mystery, more will be given. And he will have abundance of revelatory mysteries of the kingdom. Okay? But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Jesus said, I'm giving these parables and anyone who has an ear to hear, as a matter of fact, in these parables at times, Jesus would say, he who has an ear... In the Greek language, it is in such a tense that Jesus turns from a meek uh, teacher of the Word into a Pentecostal preacher. Anytime you read Jesus saying, he who has an ear, let him hear, he's screaming in the, in the Greek. He is, he is emphatically screaming. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear, you can know the revelation of my Word. Mm -hmm. But he who does not receive it, that truth that he has will be taken from him and given to someone who does not have. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, watch this, because seeing with their eyes, they don't perceive with the spirit, with their heart. And hearing with their ears, they don't hear, they may hear it physically, but they don't hear it spiritually. They may see it, but they don't understand it. He said, they don't understand verse 14. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. That's the problem with many believers today, sweetie. They, they, they dictate their circumstances through the filter of the flesh. Yes. Carnality, uh -huh. the curse. That's right. Well, life just happens. Mm -hmm. Things happen. I can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm just happy I'm on my way to heaven. That's not the will of God for your life, just to survive. But He wants you to thrive in the kingdom. He wants to give you revelation in the midst of your mess. Mm -hmm. He wants to give you a miracle in the midst of your trouble. But you have to be able to see with the spiritual understanding and hear with the spiritual understanding. He said, for the hearts of this people have grown dull and their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, they should understand with their hearts and turn and I will heal them. Jesus said, no man's without hope, but they will not. You know why? Because he didn't come in the package they thought he would. Uh -huh, that's right. he, he didn't come in the demonstration of 
a Judaism leader, political, powerful, overthrow the Roman government and take. No, no, he came as a rabbi with Shemekah to establish a kingdom, first in a man's heart. And they couldn't get it. They couldn't understand it. And so he said, but blessed are you for your eyes, they see, your ears, they hear. Assuredly, I say to you that many prophets and right now, listen to this. He said, I assuredly say to you, and when Jesus said, assuredly I say to you, he's emphasizing, if you don't hear anything else I say, hear this. Many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it, and hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. The Pharisees had added 2,000 stipulations to the Ten Commandments. Think about that. I don't know about you, but I have, hard, I have a hard time with the top 10. Now they've added 2,000 more laws to Judaism. And Rabbi Shmika comes to rewrite the rules and to do away with all of that and to fulfill it. And he says, here's the mysteries of the kingdom that's been given to you to know. And he said, oh, by the way, people like Moses and Joshua and David and Isaiah and Daniel and all of these great men of God, they desired to know what I'm about to tell you. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Right. Think about this. You and I have access to kingdom revelation that all those prophets only saw partially. Hmm. The Jeremiah's and the Isaiah's and, and uh, the Zephaniah's and the Zacharias and David himself who wrote much of the Psalms and Solomon, a man of great wisdom and Moses, the leader of the Exodus and God's establishing Abraham, the father of faith. And here Jesus says, they only knew partially. Mm. Now I'm going to reveal to you the full mystery of the kingdom of God. Isn't that powerful? So in the parable of the sower, you have this primary kingdom principle of how the kingdom operates. And we're going to get into that this week, probably last. I'm probably going to save that for last. Or, or maybe I'll do it next after the Good Samaritan. But I want to start with the Good Samaritan because the Good Samaritan is a parable of the fall of mankind. It's the beginning. It, it refers back to the book of Genesis. Now, I'm not going to have time to unfold all this for you today. We'll come back tomorrow to do it. But I want to get you just whet your appetite just a little bit. And so in the context of the parable of the Good Samaritan, sweetheart, Jesus was being tested by one of the Pharisees, one of the religious leaders. This religious spirit comes to Jesus and said, how can I have eternal life? And Jesus throws the question back at him and says, what do you read in the law? And the man says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, love your neighbor. And Jesus said, that's exactly right. And so this righteous Pharisee, this legalist, he wanted to justify himself. He wanted to look big in front of this master teacher, the only man alive with authority to interpret the Torah. And he said, well, then who is my neighbor? He shouldn't have said that. He just opened this thing wide up for Jesus. And then Jesus goes into the parable of the Good Samaritan. And again, I'm not going to read this because I don't have time to unfold it. I've got three minutes. But here's what I want to say to you. When we read the parable of the Good Samaritan, we read a parable of the fall of humanity. That it begins that uh, a certain man went down to Jerusalem, from, from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves. Uh, this is mankind went from the place of blessing. I'll just whet your appetite a little bit. A certain man, this word certain man in Greek means humanity. Humanity went from Jerusalem to Jericho. Mm -hmm. Do you know that in the book of Jasher, in the writings of the ancient Mishnah, and the ancient writings of the rabbis, they tell us that Eden was Jerusalem. Mount Moriah was the Garden of Eden. It was not in Mesopotamia somewhere. God crowned creation with Jerusalem, the capital of creation, and he put Adam in that capital, in Jerusalem, and he gave him all the wealth. In Jerusalem, all the trees that were pleasant to the eyes, you know what that means in Hebrew? They contained all the diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds of creation. Wow. 
All these diamonds that they find in Murfreesboro, Arkansas, well, they were in Jerusalem in the beginning. Every diamond God ever created was sitting on a tree in Jerusalem. Every sapphire, ruby, and emerald was on a tree. Adam owned all of it. All the four rivers coming out of the, the, the capital, Jerusalem, all those four rivers contained all the gold, silver, platinum, all the precious metals. In other words, all the wealth of the entire earth was right there in Jerusalem, and Adam owned it. And he lived there, according to the book of Jasher and the ancient Mishnah, for 40 years, the number of testing. When Adam and Eve fell, they were driven out of the garden from Jerusalem, and they were driven down to Jericho. Jerusalem is always a place of blessing. Jericho is always a place of cursing. They lived there till they died. And in this parable, there we have the story. Humanity, a certain man, humanity went down to the place of cursing. And there he fell among thieves. There's the curse. And we're going to get into that tomorrow, I promise. Thank you for watching us today. We've got one minute left. I want to encourage you to join us at The Edge, 6702 TP White Drive. Listen, we have a great, great apostolic group of people, a body of believers, but great people in this place. God's doing miracles. If you're looking for a place where you can be unleashed and released into the calling God has on your life and minister, this is the place. We are a church, yes. We are a family, absolute, just like every other church, but we are an apostolic training center equipping you to come into your destiny, fulfilling God's purpose in your life. I want you to come. You've never been among a less religious group than we are. We are a place of freedom. You know, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Well, the Greek says where Jesus, the Spirit is Lord, there's liberty. And He is Lord at the edge. Come see us Sundays at 1030 in Cabot, Arkansas. You can also watch live at DwayneMiller.com. Now, don't miss tomorrow. You're going to see some things in the story of the Good Samaritan you've never seen before. God bless you. We love you. See you tomorrow.